Hey everybody, welcome to Big Valley Living and thanks for joining us again. As promised in the spaghetti video, we're going to take this leftover spaghetti sauce that we have and we're going to turn it into a delicious lasagna dinner and another one that we can put into the freezer for a day that we just don't feel like cooking. Stay tuned, it's going to be fast and it's going to be delicious. We are super excited tonight to share with you our lasagna recipe. We use leftover spaghetti sauce and you can watch the spaghetti video. It's going to be a lot longer than this one, but trust me, it's worth it to set you up for success. So I made the spaghetti last night and we put the sauce in the refrigerator overnight so that today everything that we're going to handle is going to be cool. I've also cooked uh, lasagna noodles according to the directions on the box. I do use the old fashioned noodles that boil first and then go in. They make um, oven ready noodles now that you are welcome to use. I have tried them once and I wasn't a fan and I think that's just because I'm used to the old fashioned way. So all this is, is leftover spaghetti sauce, a little bit of ricotta cheese, a little bit of mozzarella cheese. If you grate too much, that's okay because then you can make pizza. Watch our pizza party sometime, how about that? So very simply, this is gonna be how we made, how we make it for the two of us. And usually there's a slice or two left for somebody to have lunch the next day. You need to lightly oil your pan. We use uh, olive oil spray, generally speaking. And we got this particular one at Trader Joe's, couple bucks, super handy. I totally recommend any spray oils for this type of application. What we need to do, and I got this tip whoop, from my sister-in-law, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Um, take a little bit of ricotta cheese, and you see that I have some sauce without any uh, ricotta in it off to the side. That's important for the bottom layer. So this is a 15 ounce container and I'm not gonna go nuts. I'm taking about half of it and we are going to mix it in to our spaghetti sauce real quickly. First thing you're gonna do is put some plain sauce on the bottom of your pan. And that's going to bind everything together because if you put noodles down there straight on, it's not going to have flavor and you are probably going to have a hard time getting it out of the pan when you go to serve it. So I have put just a little bit in the bottom. And then we're going to lay two pieces of noodle. I've cut them to fit. Uh, this bottom of this bread pan's maybe six inches. They are going to overlap a little bit and I don't like to waste anything. So I am saving the small ends and you can overlap those or use them in a smaller item. And the next layer is actually going to be this layer that has the um, ricotta cheese in it. And we're just going to layer this so that it covers the noodles. And it's gonna be about a quarter of an inch thick. Now, once you see this, the video that I made about spaghetti, you'll see that I cut the mushroom and zucchini pieces smaller so that they're bite-sized and they don't, you know, you don't have big old lumps in there. Then we're gonna take cheese. I started out with about a pound and a half of freshly shredded mozzarella. We do not use packaged garlic or packaged cheese in our house. If there's extra, we can make pizza. And then we're gonna repeat that layer, doing exactly what we just did and reserving 
pieces that we didn't use. If the ruffles fall off, don't you worry about that. It is worth noting that after draining the hot water off of these lasagna noodles, I did put them in cold water so that everything would be super fast and super easy to handle. We're just repeating that layer. So these little pans are really good. If you know somebody who is, is not feeling well, or if you're a single person and you don't have a huge appetite, you could put a few of these away. They're like $3.50 at the local hardware store or um, maybe Target or something. And you could put several of these away in the freezer and just pull them out when you're ready. Put them in the fridge overnight the night before if you want, and then put it in the oven at 350 for about an hour and they heat up beautifully. So let's keep on moving here. We're gonna, we've already put our next layer of the ricotta and sauce mixture in. And now I'm gonna sprinkle some more cheese on top. You know, you might be tempted to really cheese it up, but I have done that before. And yes, Michelle, there is such a thing as too much cheese. So don't put too much cheese on it, maybe a quarter to a third of a cup per layer. Okay, last layer in a, in a bread pan. Oops, I'll keep that down here. And we'll be ready to either put this in the oven or to prepare it for the freezer. I have had them in there as long as six months, but not very often. Depending on how much sauce you have left over, I could probably get three bread pans and these two out of this amount of spaghetti, but I made a big pot. We had dinner and now we're having lasagnas that will be put away for a busy day, a busy work night, or any time you want to have a home-cooked meal without having to um, recreate the whole thing, okay? so. I have placed the last layer of sauce on. I'm kind of packing it down a little bit to make sure there aren't a bunch of air bubbles. I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese on top. If you're gonna freeze this, uh, you could leave the cheese off when you package it for the freezer, but uh, it hasn't ever degraded by doing this. So I just go ahead and do it so that I don't have to worry about going out to the store or remembering to get cheese. And that, my friends, is a very easy and economical and nutritious spaghetti um, lasagna. If this is going straight into the oven, cover it with some foil, spray just a little bit of that olive oil spray on top, lay it on top, cover it, oven for 350 off of the counter for about one hour. You'll see the bubbles coming up. Take it out, let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes so that everything sets up and it makes it easier to cut without it falling all over your plate. If it's going into the freezer, what you're gonna do is put plastic wrap over the top. I press it down, then put foil over it, label it any way you want if uh, you have a lot of stuff in your freezer so you know what date you put it in and what it is and then put it in your freezer. And again, I know it's good up to six months. Okay, I can't promise anything after that. Now we're gonna prepare the single serving lasagnas. This is where the pieces that we cut off earlier can come in handy. But if you make larger pieces, you can still use them and just overlap them. Again, there's really no need for any kind of a waste in this. You're gonna be cutting this into slices anyway. So just like the larger lasagnas. While we're at it, we might as well do a second one. So there we go. There we go. Oops. This just takes a few little tablespoons. And again, this is a very welcome gift. I used to take these to my mom if she wasn't able to get out of the house and she could have a nice home cooked meal whenever she felt like it even if she was up in the middle of the night and decided that that's when eating dinner would work best for her. I know the older we get, our sleeping and eating habits change quite a bit. So this again is a very welcome gift for somebody who doesn't get out as much as they used to. Oops, so 
I just made a nice little layer, just like the large ones. This only ends up being like a little two layer lasagna. Then we sprinkle some cheese. Ooh, boy. Settle down, Sparky. Okay. You just sprinkle a little cheese on that. And we're going to use these smaller pieces again. Again, this is just two little layers. And I'm going to cut that a little bit to make sure that they fit nicely because we always want our food to look as pretty as it tastes delicious. And this is just a nice, again, two layer, simple, easy meal for a single person. You, what we're gonna do is put plastic on these and we're gonna put foil over the top, label them, put them in the freezer. So the cooking instructions for both of these would be to either put them in the refrigerator the night before from the freezer so that they can partially thaw don't forget to take the foil off, remove the plastic, put the foil back on, 350 oven for approximately an hour to an hour and a half. You can also take them straight out of the freezer, remove that plastic, put the foil back on. And I started at about 250 straight out of the freezer and just let the oven come up with the pan, especially the glass, and then turn it up to 350 after about 45 minutes and that way you don't get any thermal shock to the to the glass and uh, cook it off for about another hour and a half or so if you have an instant read thermometer just make sure that it uh, you can actually see it boiling on the side of the glass to be honest with you and on these just with an instant read make sure that it's about 150 degrees on the inside take them out of the oven let them sit for 20 to 30 minutes to uh, come back together again and you're gonna have yourself the most delicious homemade lasagna. After 50 minutes, we were able to pull the other lasagna that we made for dinner out of the oven. It was a 350 oven. And on top of tonight's dinner, we also had a nice spaghetti dinner last night. We have two bread pans full of lasagna that will be ready, they'll be in the freezer, and two single serving pans of lasagna as well. So for under $30, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six meals that we got. That's $5 a meal, and you can't even eat at McDonald's for that anymore. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, like, and hit the bell so that you get notifications when we upload new videos. We'll be having gardening videos and canning videos and more cooking videos coming in the future. Thanks again for joining Big Valley Living and have a great day. Bye.